Alicia G here with the New Release Wednesday show. And we are here with Tom Kane from basically everything you grew up watching. <laughs> if only that were true. <laughs> so, how did you get into voice acting? Oh boy, uh, I was 15 years old. I, I lived in uh, Overland Park, Kansas, and I just thought it'd be fun to hear myself on TV. I, I didn't know people got paid to do this sort of thing. And, you know, I, I was the poster child for ADD back in the day before they had a name for it. and. Uh, I just started calling local advertisers and offering my voice, uh, and hard as it is to imagine, someone took me up on it, and uh, here I am. Honestly, I did. I, I have ADHD, and I honestly did the same thing with the local radio station. Just kept calling them, like you're 13, you are too young to intern here. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was 15, and they. Uh, the only reason I got away with it is that they didn't ask, uh, you know, on the phone. You know, I put on my. I put on my adult voice, and I was talking like this, and uh, they thought I was a grown-up, and uh, the very first session I got booked on, just, you know, I was offering to do it for free, so getting booked on it is kind of the wrong term, but yeah, I had my daddy drive me down to the studio, and it was a public service announcement for the American Cancer Society, and they almost canceled it because they were looking, they thought it was my dad, and he's like, no, this pimply-faced 15-year-old is the... <laughs> guy you were talking to and uh, but anyway we went ahead and recorded it and everyone was happy and a week later they hired me to do six screen actors guild tv commercials oh, so wow. here i am that's that's a major step up to i mean american cancer is yeah still yeah still a really big one and then all of a sudden no I, sag I, stuff. I turned 16 years old that happen. month and i bought my first car with my first job oh so. wow <laughs> So, like I said, you've done a lot, a lot of voice work over the years. Um, you've done Tony Stark, you've done Professor Plutonium, Yoda, which is a huge one. Oh, yes. But you're the master you have found. Yes. Or at least his voice. So, so, out of all of the roles you have played, what would you say has been the most challenging voice for you? Well, challenging, yeah, I mean, they're, they're different things are, different voices are, have their different issues. I mean, with Yoda, Obviously, the, the trick is to to keep it as is sounding as much like Frank Oz's original Yoda as possible, but still, you know, allow me to, to put my own spin on it, so to speak. Because you know, I I mean, it's just it's just numerical fact. I've probably spoken a hundred times more Yoda lines than Frank ever did. So, you know, 99% of the stuff I've recorded as Yoda, there's no reference. Yeah. I can't go back and play a, a sample of, you know, something from Empire Strikes Back and then, you know, and, and figure out how exactly he might have said that in an episode of, of the Clone Wars or something. So I've had to kind of interpret a lot of it. And, and so far it seems to be working okay because they keep hiring me. So. You'll know when it stops working. It's like, yes, oh, I now guess we're so. looking for someone else now. So, and you, like you said, you've been in so many different shows and movies and such. Um, what's, have you done any live action? Very little. Um, one of the, one of the oddities of uh, voiceover work is if you're, you know, when you live in LA and you're, you're auditioning and working as an actor, you know, if you're, if you're just barely getting by, uh, doing a little on-camera work, and you're doing a little voiceover work, and then you can you can do a little bit of everything. But once you become successful at one or the other, you kind of can only do that because you know if you're if you're if you're successful at voiceover work, um, you're working every day or, or several times a week, and your clients, you know, if you, if you get even a small part on a movie. You know, you may be in a movie for all of five minutes or ten minutes, but that usually requires you traveling somewhere, and you'll be on set for a week. And then you and, can't, and you can't yeah, and and uh, your voiceover clients, they're not going to wait a week for you to come back. They need you now. So you kind of have to choose one. It's like, you either want to do voiceover work or you want to be an on-camera actor, so... And you, have you done both the... Uh, voice work where they have you just isolated by yourself in a studio and someone you're running lines off of someone else that's in the oh, studio yeah. with you? No, the vast majority of, of what I've done in my career is exactly that way. I'm, I'm usually alone, partly because uh, uh, you know most of my work is actually in movie trailer voiceovers and TV commercials, and I'm usually the announcer. Well, the announcer doesn't interact 
you know, with the other characters. So they just record the announcer separately. Um, and in recent years, I don't live in LA anymore because you know the technology has gotten to the point where I can live anywhere because uh, they don't need my body. They don't need. They just need my voice. So uh, just phone it in, literally. Right. So uh, you know. Most of the Clone Wars I did remotely from my studio. I would just record my, my Yoda lines. Sometimes if it was an episode where there was a lot of interaction, uh, then I would hook up and we'd, we'd have all the actors together. But uh, most of the time, just it's just me in my sad little lonely room. So the, it seems like the culture behind the uh, technology has changed dramatically how things have been done. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, they still try, if possible, to get everybody in the same room at the same time if it's a cartoon episode and, it, and it's still if they can't you know it's basically still done the way they did old radio dramas in the 30s you know it's six people gathered around six microphones and um, and they still prefer that but it, it's less and less possible because uh, you know uh, there's more and more celebrities involved and their schedules are impossible to coordinate with six other people. And a lot of the problem is is just LA is is just not workable anymore in terms of traffic. You know, it, to get to get uh, half a dozen people that can all get to the same place at the same time is getting harder and harder. So it's just getting more difficult sometimes to get it all done at one shot. So. A lot of it's up in Canada now too. Uh, some of it is. I mean, uh, Fortunately, almost all the leads, you know, the, the starring roles in all the cartoons are still American actors. They will do some where they'll uh, record, you know, if there are six characters, they'll do four of them uh, with Canadian actors and, and two of them with the American actors. And unfortunately, you know, it's just to save money. Uh, yeah. it's, it's cheaper to hire Canadian actors. But, uh, um, you know, that's, that's a whole other topic. Uh. Um, is there any role you haven't played yet that you would love to? Well, you know, for a guy who's a Star Wars fan as I am, uh, you know, the voiceover gig of the century is Darth Vader. Uh, I would have loved to have done Vader, but, you know, you unfortunately have to sound like him. Um, and I can do a bad Vader, but I can't do a good one. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that one's not in the cards. But, uh, but, yeah, I would have loved to have been able to do that. Uh, I, you know, I've met James uh, James Earl Jones a number of times over the years. We used to have the same agent, and uh, you know, just to, I, you know, you have to sound like him. It's it's just impossible to fake it. The guy, yeah, he's I, got such a distinct voice. Well, I mean, the first time I actually physically met him, I felt him talking before I saw him. I I, I was really coming around the corner, and I swear to God, I just like felt a rumbling <laughs> and then I woke up and, I, and then and then he's well you know, I remember. And I'm like oh well that was it it's I was, like you feel it right yeah here. it was just amazing <laughs> the, the guy's just got the most incredible resonance so. oh I know awesome well thank you so much for coming my out pleasure here. it was great talking to you appreciate it I do okay. yes awesome once again this is Alicia and, and don't worry <laughs> it's not a trap once again, this is Alicia G with the New Release Wednesday Show here with Tom Kane at All-Star Comic Con 2018. And you're watching New Release Wednesday.